Guys, how are the kings and priests of the Most High God doing? <laughs> Praise God. All right, guys. Uh, we are going to begin our... Uh, we're continuing in the series, and now we're in the section that we will call uh, porters or gatekeepers. Okay? Now, um, this is very, very exciting. I'm going to have to uh, divide it up in different sections to have different areas of focus. Um, but anyway, just as a recap and a reminder, um, I think we're when I post this video, this will be part 10 um, in the series. And now what we're going to do is we're going to um, now look at the third area or branch of service. And just to uh, remind you um, that uh, what we've covered uh, so far is the Sar Elohim or the judges um, the uh, singers and musicians from Zion, and now we're going to look at the porters. Now, uh, within the, um, in Chronicles chapter 24, 25, and 26, it gives you uh, the courses or order that um, David set in place for these men. And the number of the course is, t there are 24 courses. So there are um, 24 courses uh, within the Sar Elohim, and those go back to two men that were the sons of Aaron. Um, within the singers and musicians, those go back to three men, um, uh, Haman, Asap, and Jebuthun. Um, now we're going to look at the porters, and again, there are 24. And uh, remember that the number 24 are like the number of the elders, 24 elders. And so you have the, first off, we have um, the Sar Elohim, or the judges, 24 courses. Two, we have singers and musicians, 24 courses. Three, porters, 24 courses. 24 times three is 72. So whenever we see the uh, number 70, it is synonymous with 72 in that it is the 70 elders, okay? So um, that's the section of what we're going to look at as these uh, porters and how we act as porters. So porters act as uh, gatekeepers, and they also act as messengers as well. Uh, so there's a number of things that they do. For example, um, whenever you see the word watchman, um, those are porters, porters standing at gates watching. Um, so they're actually in time, and that's where our our clocks and everything show us where the watches are. Um, but um, we're going to go into different uh, segments of what porters are. And basically, let me say this. Keep in mind that the many things I'm going to be sharing with you is how the angelic operate and how uh, porters or gatekeepers and or messengers operate before the throne of God. And uh, essentially, God has revealed this information not for us to just sit and just like, whoa, but we are to participate. Um, and keep in mind, everything I'm sharing with you, I'm sharing with you with the expectation that you actually do this stuff. It's not just cerebral information like, oh, I can check off my list. That's what this information is. This isn't just school um, in that you just are compiling information. It's like trade school where you learn the information and you do it. Um, so obviously when we meet and we get together, we do it. But... Even um, what we'll do is I'll release this information to you, release it to your spirit, that you can also um, do this. Okay, now the first thing I want to mention is that Elijah um, said that he stood before the Lord. And a couple times he mentioned, the Lord from whom I stand. So that's the first thing that you must become acquainted is to stand before the Most High God. Now, you certainly do that in worship, and it's also important for you to stand before Him and uh, receive instruction. So you might just stand and you might just present yourself, uh, and then uh, you might stand before Him and then He will give you things to do. He'll commission you. Now, as, uh, as spirit beings, we're not bound to just where our body is. You know, Many of times we're seeing the throne in heaven, our body is still here. But 
by the Spirit, God can send you places where you can see and observe what's going on, like Ezekiel and many of the great prophets, that you're not bound by the limitations of your body, but God, by His Spirit, will take you and bring you different places. That's one reason my hair is long, is uh, Ezekiel's hair, um, the angel took him by his hair. And so um, I did that in honor of the Nazarites and Ezekiel and those that God is taking by the Spirit to do stuff. Okay, So there's expressions in the Bible, running to and fro, um, and messengers and different things. There's, this is throughout all many things in Scripture, but we're going to uh, narrow down our focus on uh, a, cer a certain aspect of this. So the first thing one must do is learn how to stand. So Father, I ask that you just release uh, the glory of those listening that they would know how to stand before the Most High God. And if you close your eyes, you may even see yourself um, and see your see yourself standing before the Lord. It's like your third person. You can actually see yourself standing and you can see God um, looking at you. And so that is standing before God and presenting yourself, okay? And as you practice that and you do that, you'll notice that God will um, do different things with you, okay? And we'll, we'll get into that, but now let's look at, um, I have the handout that I'll send in the email to you on the porters, okay? Now, um, I'm first going to just show it up to you in, in the video, um, just so you can kind of see um, what it looks like if, you're, if you don't have this handout. But um, essentially what we have is within um, the different gates of the temple, there are different um, orderings of posts or various positions and various gates. If you add those up, you can see the number here is 24. There are 24. So again, that's the order of each branch of service. And at this time, we're looking at the porters. Now, um, as you add them up, you can actually observe that they form a pattern. And I drew that pattern in a cross in that um, it actually looks like this. So that at this gate, the bottom gate, um, the east gate, there are six posts. And you can see that that leg of the cross is longer than... Um, at the south and north, there are four, and you can see those are um, on the uh, four part on the uh, right and left of the cross. Um, and it also says that the house of Asum, Asupum is um, two by two, and so I've drawn that in a um, a small cross here, and then. The west gate has four, and there's parbar. So parbar is two, one, two, and four. So that whole pattern of these posts, if you draw it, it actually looks like a cross. Okay. Um, and what we're going to do is I'm going to have a section um, of, of the video where we're going to focus on the treasury rooms, how to um, stand in the treasury rooms, what to do, uh, and, and how that operates. That's just remarkable, remarkable things. But I'm just going to go over here um, just some aspects of how these porters were assigned to their various posts and what their names mean. Um, so, for example, when um, Obed-Edom had the ark, um, his life was just changed. And many of the uh, porters that were assigned were the sons of Obed-Edom. Okay? Um, and his name means servant of Edom. And so he was over many of the storehouses and gathering um, places. And keep in mind, the temple is like, you know, obviously it's a place of worship and things like that, but it's also a bank. I mean, this is this, like a central bank for the whole nation. Okay? And so we're also priests of the Most High God. We must stand in the central bank of the universe and know how this stuff works. Okay? And we can do that. Um, but I'm just mentioning where they're assigned. So Obed-Edom is assigned to the south gate. Um, Shemaliah, his name means repaid of Jehovah. He's at the east gate. Zechariah, Jehovah remembers. He's at the north gate. At the west gate, there is Shupam, and his name actually means serpents. And Hosiah, his name is refuge. 
his name means refuge, okay? Now we'll get, actually get into, like I said later, we'll get into the, uh, actually, the order of the ones that God assigned to the treasury rooms, okay? And the um, various posts and gates. Well, let me mention a couple now. Um, the one gate is in the west portion of the temple, and that's called Shalaketh. And, and that word, um, the root of that means to overthrow or cast. And, and um, the root word was actually used when, um, I can't believe it was Elijah or Elisha, when they cast the tree in the waters because the axe head sank. And so they cast the tree into the waters and then walk the, the axe head rose. So that casting is a casting of your cares. It's also a debt cancellation gate. So uh, the various debts that accrue, this is where they are canceled, okay? So what you do is when the first thing with your mind and all the things that are going on in your life, you can't bring those um, things into the treasure room. You must cast your cares. So Jesus said, take no thought to your life. So when you stand in the treasure rooms, it's not about you. Sorry, I got this one hair sticking up. It's bothering me. <laughs> but it's not about you. It's about uh, administering um, the treasury rooms to the earth. Okay? And so don't make it about you or your bills or your problems. You must first cast all that anxiety and cast that at this gate. So it's like a burden. You may feel like a burden and you can cast the burden that's over your shoulder. Whatever it is, however you do it, you must do that. And once you get that clarity in your spirit, then you can operate in these gates, okay? So I just wanted to mention that one and another one, and that is the causeway. And the causeway uh, is a course highway or staircase, and it is the causeway of the going up. So it's an actual staircase. Many people that go to heaven observe this staircase coming down, okay? And it's a staircase of going up. So you may see it in one level, and you go up the stairs, and then you're in another level. Now, you can, as a priest, administer at that staircase. And so at the top of it, an angel is assigned, but you can also stand that post, and you can lower that staircase to people, and then they can also go to heaven. Okay? So that's another one that we... Uh, we can learn and you can stand at that. It's, it's quite amazing. Okay, so now let's look at within these posts, okay, there are certain uh, men and the, the men um, had their sons assigned to these various posts. So let's look at that real quick. So the first one is um, uh, Mesaliamaya, if I'm pronouncing that right. <laughs> and so, uh, he had seven sons, and um, his seven sons are um, all appointed, so he has seven. And without reading all the names and everything, just look at what their names mean. This is remarkable. Um, Jah remembers. Um, God makes known. Endowment of Jah. God hires me, or to endure. Eternity, or to hide. Um, Yehovah has graced unto Yehovah are my eyes. That's just what their names mean. So many of their names have uh, financial things within their uh, definitions. Okay, and then what we have is we have Obadidim. Now, when you when you're following me on this sheet, um, you'll notice I have numbers. Um, let's see if we can see it here. There's numbers right here, and then there's numbers here. So, for example, the one I just read. Um, he has seven sons. Now, Obadidim, um, he has um, how many sons? He has eight sons, but the way it's organized here is to, to show you that the first son, um, Shemaliah, he's the firstborn, but then he has sons which are also appointed. Okay. Now, this is important because when you, if you actually read this chapter, which is 1 Chronicles 26, most of what I'm describing to you will be kind of obscured uh, from the numbers without this information. And it's helpful to draw this out in the way that I have. That way you can see the 24 posts, you can see the men assigned and what uh, gates, okay? 
So, um, so you have Shemaliah, and then he has six sons. So he's the firstborn of Obed-Edom. And again, let me just read the names. Um, Obey, or Jah listens. Um, Lion of Yahuwah, healed of God, serving, worshiping. God has given. He is my God. God sustains and upholds. Um, I mean, let I me mean, just keep going. Um, Jah, Yahuwah endows. Yahuwah is brother. Wages, reward, given to God, family, worshiper, recompense, times, wages of Yahovah. Inheritance, portion, purified, Yah mentions. So these are just the names of, of these guys. This is the meaning of what their names um, are. Okay? And so um, so I list them here. So the firstborn of Obedinim, he has six sons, and then um, then you have the rest of Obedidan's sons also listed. All right? And then the last is um, Hosea. And he has uh, three sons that are, are, there are other sons that are listed, but these are the ones that are actually um, assigned the posts. Okay? And so the other column I give you gives you the number between 1 and 24 of who these 24 are. Okay? So that way we can see them all, we can see all their posts, we can see they're all assigned. So remember we have 24 um, courses of um, the judges, we have 24 singers and musician courses, and we have 24 um, uh, porters, okay? And 24 times 3 is 72, okay? Um, so that's what we want to go over with this sheet, okay? And there's, uh, there is more here, there's more revelation, you'll notice I keep talking about their names and and these things, there are other things where they are assigned to certain posts at certain times. Um, but this is what I want to go over um, real simply with this handout. And then the bottom section we'll talk about in another video where we talk about the treasury rooms. Okay? So you can see I keep saying the number 70 or 72. So now let's look at um, when Jesus commissions the 70. Um, that's in Luke chapter 10. And let's look and observe um, how the uh, 70 disciples are acting as porters, okay? So uh, Luke 10, uh, verse 1, and we're going to go over the detail of how this works, okay? Okay, after these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself would come. Okay, so what's going on? So um, Jesus is commissioning 70 disciples and he's sending them to various cities two by two and he's going to go and preach the gospel there but he's sending them ahead of him. So before he goes, he's sending these disciples, right? And keep in mind that the number 70 here is synonymous and is connected to the, the number 70 of the disciples elders or the Sanhedrin. So sometimes that can be the number 70 or 72. Okay, So keep in mind that is a priestly order, it is an order of elders or judges, and that's what Jesus is doing. He's connecting to the Sanhedrin in heaven and the order of the 70 there with these men and these disciples. Okay, uh, Verse 2, Therefore he said to them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest, now this is an actual person, this is the Lord, but this is specifically the Lord of harvest, that he would send forth laborers into the harvest. Okay. Now, this is actually also how the angels operate as well. So there are, again, we're, we're coming together with heaven and earth, so the angels are the laborers, but we are the laborers as well. Okay. Now, uh, in verse 1, let me point out something. He sent them to before before his face into every city and place where he would go, okay? Um, and then he says, Go your ways, behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves, carry neither purse, nor script, nor shoes, salute no man by the way, and whatever house you enter, say, Peace be into this house. So, let me, um, let me break this down, okay? So this is happening in your life, whether you realize it or not. So the Lord has sent you and commissioned you 
into a city. So for example, if you work, um, let's, say you, you, let's say you're a teacher, I'll just throw it out there. So the city is education. It's like a mountain. It, it is a structure. Okay, and there are rules, there is culture, it is um, organized. So all the people that make up that city, just like a city has multiple aspects, um, the same thing is when uh, whatever you do as a job or whatever physical city you are in, it is made up of people and culture and there is a structure to it. Okay, and so uh, within that city, you. you uh, you change, you have to change to that city. So uh, if you work in the education, so, well, you have to follow the rules. You have to, okay, well, you have to be educated. You have to, the, you have to have this. You have years of service, whatever. If you want promotion, you want certain things, you have to obey the rules of the city, okay? But then there's a house. So if you're a teacher, you know, you don't work for the whole education system in the United States of America. You work for a school. And if you're, it's an elementary school, it's, you know, ABC Elementary School in a XYZ town, right? So you say, peace be to this house. So that is a house, okay? So keep in mind, God is always doing this. We're just not cooperating with him, okay? So what you do is when you learn this, you say, okay, well, I'm here. I'm where God sent me. This isn't just for missionaries where, like, oh, okay, this is the missionaries. Um, no, you're a porter of the Most High God. You're a king and a priest. God has sent you, and now you must cooperate with God, finally. Okay, so you release peace to that house. Now, when you release peace, something will happen. Um, you release peace, you release shalom, you do that. If you keep doing that every day, it may just be like a rubber ball on the wall. Boom! It might just bounce right back. Other things might just happen. You might have a certain favor. You might be able to um, have things open up to share the gospel, whatever. But you must learn to release peace in the house. Okay? Now watch what he says. And if the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. Well, who the heck is this? Who is Jesus talking about? So, who is the son of peace? Well, amazingly enough, guys, um, guess what? Even though God has sent you, um, it, the whole thing hasn't started with you. He's already doing stuff. And so um, the son of peace is the angel. So there may be one angel or many that are part of that city. And not only that city, of that house. So for example, as, as the teacher, you release that peace, and then you may say, oh my gosh, here's a, there's an angel that's assigned to the city. And this is what they do. You can... You can and you can see the whole thing is organized, and you're like, wow. Um, or it could, the son of peace could also be a person. So when you release that peace, then all of a sudden, within the structure of that house or that city, all of a sudden the kingdom starts shaking things up, and now all of a sudden, like a magnet, the, there's another Christian. And now you can go two by two, um, just like the Lord's. You're not by yourself. Okay. So the son of peace may be an angel. And amazingly enough, um, you know, you can meet them and you can uh, find out what they're doing. Um, and, you know, but then when you start engaging this, it's like, wow, this is going on. And the peace, and it shall not turn to you again. So the um, your peace shall rest upon it. Okay, so then now your peace is resting upon that city. It's resting upon that house. And it's... it's uh, uh, not return to you. It's not been like the rubber ball. It's it's like okay, well, there's there's stuff to do here. Uh, the the kingdom um, and the angels are very excited to finally have someone to work with them, um, because much of what they do is just you know on the other side of the veil without mankind really knowing much of what's going on. Uh, in verse seven, in that same house remain eating and drinking of such thing as they give, for the labor is worthy of his hire. Um, go not house to house. So wherever um, you find yourself or whatever house, you know, stay there. Don't, don't you know, jump it to say, oh, okay, um, I don't, you know, if it's a teacher, I don't like this school, I'm switching around. If you find peace and you're operating in the kingdom 
even, no matter what challenge you're going through, you have to stay in that house and keep at this. And whatever city you enter, now we're talking about the city. So, uh, and whatever city you enter, and they receive you, eat such things that are set before you. And here you go. Heal the sick that are there. And say to them, the kingdom of God is at hand. But into whatsoever city you enter, and they receive you not, go your ways um, out into the streets of the same city and say, okay, uh, uh, even the very dust of your, of your city, which cleaves to us, um, we wipe off against you, um, notwithstanding, be sure of this, that the kingdom of God has come nigh upon you, okay? So it could, um, so it could return to you, all right? Now, um, what you want to do is you want to be cautious of not cursing um, the city, um, because, you know, ultimately that's up to the Lord Jesus. Um, but saying to them, it shall be more tolerable than Sodom for that city. But woe unto you. Now, Jesus then goes into various woes of this, the responses of the cities that his um, disciples have, um, you know, had had, a, um, had the peace or not cooperating with the kingdom um, take place. Woe to, uh, and, it, and it just lists them there, you know. Um, and then he and then he goes on to you know to uh, describe this and now this is real guys and so you don't want to curse uh, these cities curse these uh, mountains and everything um, because you know you don't really know all of what's going on you're just being sent and you're cooperating with the kingdom of heaven and then um, you know you want to learn how this works okay you send peace you okay well there's an angel to the city there's an angel to the house there's angels to, um, you know, industries. There's angels to businesses and schools. And, you know, God is involved with all these things. And all these things are to bring about the harvest, okay? Uh, so that's an example of how, uh, um, how a porter works, okay? And, uh, and this is amazing because, you know, you can see this. This will work and it'll operate and just like jesus said verse 21 and jesus rejoiced in spirit and said i thank you O father lord of heaven and earth that you have hid these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes even so father it seemed pleasing in your sight so the information i'm just telling you as you i mean it's just the lord is greatly pleased when we um cooperate with him and we are the foolish ones you know and so you are lambs amongst wolves this is this is very challenging to do when he um, puts you in these um, situations, okay? Um, so that's a, a major aspect of the porters uh, that I wanted to share, that, you know, the, with the 70 here, these 70 are connected with the 70 um, in, in the uh, priesthood, okay? And so, uh, you know, so we can cooperate with them, okay? So um, that concludes um, the first section on the porters. So we looked at that the all porters um, go back to their fathers, Obedidim, uh, Messaliah, and I uh, can't remember the other one's name. I think it's Hosea, um, but it's on your sheet. Um, and, uh, and and that's that's important as well. But let's keep in mind that our, natu our national um, physical um, you know, nationality and our ethnicity and everything, it doesn't mean a hill of beans to do the priesthood. We are priests of the Most High God, not because of who we are in the natural, it's who we are in the spirit. And we are born in Zion. We are born in Christ. And in Christ, we are sons of the Most High God. We are kings and priests. He has redeemed us. Remember the Song of the Lamb? He has redeemed us. Um, to be kings and priests, okay? But in redeeming us, he has actually changed the qualifications and rules around priesthood to allow us as Gentiles to um, be part of this, okay? So, um, again, um, I am, uh, you know, concluding here, and I bless you guys, and I, I pray, Father, that you just release um, the glory of your instructions, the glory of your kingdom, Father, that we send out peace and, and we will begin to cooperate with the angels in heaven. We'll begin to cooperate and stand before the Most High God. 
uh, will begin to cooperate with the Sons of Peace of the other people that are already um, uh, doing work in the various houses and cities where you send us. And we are so grateful, Lord Jesus, that you're sending us places where you will go. And so we thank you that you will redeem all things. And you will uh, redeem all aspects of mankind. You are involved in all things, in entertainment and and music and education and and uh, court systems of mankind, Lord, that you will uh, redeem all things through your Son. And we give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen.